I'm Tony Keat, the Christmas light guy. I get a lot of questions about what does it take to put on a display like mine. In this tutorial, I'm going to do a behind the scenes look at this year's display. I will start with what it looks like designed and modeled in X lights, then do a walkthrough of the actual setup. Here's what my display looks like running at night. Now let's have a look at the props, controllers, networking, and all the glue it takes to run a show like this. Let's get started. First, let's look at the layout in X lights. Here is my house and display in 3D as viewed in the layout tab. I will actually move to the sequencer tab and open the house preview for this demo. Notice the viewing angle of my display is at an angle. This year I moved the focus from directly in front to an angled view. This was done to allow more cars to view my display as my lot extends this way. In the front, I have eight flex arches 50, with 50 node strips. In the middle of each arch is a five node stake with LED domes about two and a half inches in diameter. Behind that is a 100 piece stake, what I call a piece cube. Each stake has 10 pixels each for 1,000 pixels. On the sides are 10 180 degree medium Buscoyo mini trees with stars, and also six uh, of the large 180 degree Buscoyo mini trees with stars. My mega tree is 180 degrees, 24 by 50 pixels, plus a 24 inch. Uh, star that's got 90 pixels and in the front are six of the Buscoyo chroma present singles with 50 pixels each Over here to the side. We have a Buscoyo pixel spinner 36 inches um, with 193 pixels in the front of that we have 16 piece stakes uh, with 9 pixels each along the walls here are 12 12 inch chroma flake Snowflakes, those are the two prong, each of those have 30 pixels. We have three of the three prong uh, snowflakes here, 48 pixels. Five of the hexagon snowflakes, 48 pixels. We have a homemade spinner with 90 pixels. We have roof line, verticals. Um, I have a window outline, I have an arch outline. I have two chroma cane 48 candy canes on the side. I have two more or four more of the Buscoyo 180 degree large mini trees. I have three uh, 3D presents, one large and two medium. I also have 16 three node stakes in the front with the same two and a half inch diameter pucks that I use here. There's a tree here and there are 25 node stakes. Also I have a 1400 pixel matrix with about one and a half inch spacing here. There's also a tune to sign that's not shown since it's a completely separate um, separate display. So now that we've looked at my house layout in 3D, let's take a look at the controllers. I will close the house preview and switch to the controllers tab. As you can see, I have main controller one and main controller two. Those are two Falcon controllers. They are the F16 V3. One has a, an expansion, a differential expansion, and the other one does not. So each have 16 outputs. I have a Culp K8 PB uh, with no expansions, and that has out eight outputs. I also have five smart remotes. Four of those smart remotes have three 
smart remotes daisy chained together for 12 outputs and one has two four port smart remotes chained together for eight outputs. Now we've seen how the display is modeled in X lights. Let's see what the real display looks like, starting with the control system and network. Starting with my network and control system, I have a very basic system. It's a eight port switch for my wired devices. I have a Raspberry Pi running FPP. The audio out is going through a Sound Blaster 3 into my FM transmitter, and I'm just running a stock uh, antenna. And over here, I have a MacBook Pro for doing sequencing and editing these videos. Here is a network diagram that shows my show network is separate from my home wireless network. The master FPP has two network interfaces, wired and wireless. The FPP is connected to the show network via ETH0 or the wired interface. The FPP is also connected to the home network via WLAN0 or the wireless interface. This allows me to connect to the FPP from my laptop on my home network to upload sequences from XLights or to modify settings on the FTP using the admin interface. Also using the FPP proxy feature, I can access the admin interfaces on all my controllers. Okay, let's move outside. Panning from side to side, you get a good look at most of the display setup. In the front are my eight plex arches. Behind that, 100 piece stakes. On the sides, I have 10 medium mini trees and six large mini trees. And here is a close-up of my five node stakes in the middle of each arch. Here is how I mount my arches using 12 inch long nails driven through the base flange and into the ground. Walking up the side, provides a better view of the medium mini trees, the large mini trees, my spinner, and other props. Here is a better look at my mega tree star and my 180 degree 24 strand by 50 pixel mega tree. The base is 3 quarter inch EMT using maker pipe couplers to hold it all together. Here's another look at the mega tree base and the six chroma presents mounted in front. Here's a close-up of the maker pipe coupler on my mega tree base. Moving around for a back view of the mega tree base and my main Falcon controller. Opening up the main controller, it has dual 12 volt power supplies, a Falcon F16 V3, with four port differential expansion and an eight port power distro board for power injection, which currently isn't being used. Now let's take a look at the piece stake array or what I call the piece cube. I have 10 rows, each with 10 piece stakes for a total of 100 piece stakes. Here is a close up of a piece stake. Each stake has 10 pixel nodes. To mount each piece stake, I use a 1 quarter inch diameter by 24 inch long fiberglass garden stake pushed into the ground and a cable tie around the piece stake and the garden stake. Opening up the main controller number 2, it also has dual 12 volt power supplies, a Falcon F16 V3 with a 4 port differential expansion board. Moving to my differential remotes, here is a front view of the enclosure and PVC mounting stand. And here is a back view of the enclosure and PVC mounting stand. Opening up a differential remote, this remote has a single 12 volt power supply and three smart receivers daisy chained together. This gives me three outputs for each of the four smart remote ports. Now let's take a look at my matrix. 
It is about 3 feet tall and 7 feet wide. It is constructed of 3 quarter inch EMT with maker pipe couplers. It has 28 rows of 50 pixels per row for a total of 1400 pixels and a pixel spacing of about 1.5 inches. Moving around to the back of the matrix, I've opened the controller so we can have a look. It has dual 12 volt power supplies. One is mounted in the base and the other mounted in the lid. The matrix controller uses a Culp K8 PB with 8 outputs and an 8 port distro board for power injection. The matrix controller is mounted to the back of the matrix frame using 3 quarter inch EMT and maker pipe couplers. Now let's look at the props on the front entrance. Starting with the roof outline using 1 half inch PVC pipe drilled with 2 inch spacing. Next a homemade spinner made out of plex tubing and pixel mounting strips. An entrance arch outline using PVC pipe and pixel mounting strips for the verticals. A couple of snowflakes and a couple of candy canes. My house has veneer, stone, and brick, which can be a challenge to mount props. I use expandable wall anchors to mount props on the veneer stone. Insert the anchors in between two stones and screw to expand. Here is a close-up view of how I mounted the candy canes to the veneer stone. Here is a close-up of the wall anchors. These are actually used for mounting wire frame closet shelves but they work great for mounting props on stone veneer. Next, let's look at mounting props to brick. I use cable tie blocks hot glued to the brick and cable ties to mount my props. Here is a look at my snowflakes mounted using this method. Here is a close up of the cable tie blocks. I use a utility knife to remove the sticky foam backing before I hot glue them to the brick. I use this method to mount all my props that are mounted to brick. Another trick I use to secure my verticals at ground level is to use a camping stake with a ball bungee cord attached. This allows some give to the verticals but still holds them in place nicely. Moving to some of the ground mounted props, I have 16 of these three node stakes using 2 inch diameter puck LEDs and PVC pipe. Here is a back view of one of my three node stakes. I use the same garden stakes that I used to mount my piece cube stakes to mount these. Recall they are 1 quarter inch diameter by 24 inch long fiberglass garden stakes pushed into the ground and then I use a cable tie to secure it all together. Moving to my spinner, I don't have a back view of these, my spinner but as you can see I mount my spinner on the ground and I use two one half inch diameter rods driven into the ground on each side. I also have another rod driven into the ground at an angle to hold the spinner straight and upright. The last props we will look at are my Biscoyo 3D presents. I have one large and two medium 3D presents. These presents are also mounted to the ground. Here is one of my medium 3D presents turned so that you can see the 12 inch nail driven through the bottom base plate as designed. The nail is then driven into the ground to securely hold the 3D present in place. As you can see there's a lot of glue that goes into a display. Everything from planning, building props, building controllers, networking, sound, sequencing, mounting props, tools, and spare parts it takes a lot of time passion or obsession and money to create and build a display. I hope you've enjoyed this tutorial and it's provided some useful tips and tricks and information on behind the scenes look at my display. Please let me know if you have any questions. If you'd like to see more of these tutorials, please subscribe to my channel, The Christmas Light Guy.